right, okay. Oh, go on, Hoban, if you're going. All right, welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, I'm out working Slate. Slate is about a five month old silver Labrador retriever. Now, just to get my biases out of the way, uh, hey, for those of you who watch my channel, you know what I think about labs, right? All dogs want to be labs, but all labs want to be black, right? So this is my, this is my preference. This is my own bias right here. You're going to always see lots of black labs here. Uh, but every so often, go on nerd, every so often I'm going to get, you know, a silver lab or a chocolate lab. And uh, a lot of those dogs are nice dogs and they make it into my videos and they look really good, uh, you know, doing our formal education here on the exercise for small challenges course they look pretty good when we're out adventuring you know but in the comment section it never fails that i get a ton of experts making derogatory comments about the dogs right now back up there and show them this dog uh, bonus points for if you know what type of dog this is uh, and if you can guess why he's here show them luke what you look like guess why he's here okay and uh, then tell me what it's going to be like to train them. I mean, I know there's a lot of experts out there, so uh, you ought to ch chime in on this particular dog. But back to this one. So this is what is popularly known as, as a silver Labrador retriever. And whenever you post a video of one, everybody jumps in the comment section and they say, well, Stoney, Labrador retrievers only come in three colors. Okay. And that's true until it's not. Okay, now, so what you have to understand that if you're going to start talking about like breed standards as being very important to dogs, then we need to be super strict in adhering to the breed standard from the point of the people who originate the breed. Or we need to accept the fact that as the times change and people's preferences change, then the breed standard and how it's interpreted should change with those, uh, uh, with those different standards. Okay. So if you look at this little dog right here, if you took this little dog right here back uh, and you went to you know, 1850s, 1860s, 1880s, you know, you're gonna find dogs uh, maybe that look like this dog. Maybe have a little white on their chest, maybe have some white on their feet, you know. And that's gonna take, carry true from whenever, um, uh, you know, like British uh, aristocrats started, you know, standardizing, you know, retrievers for, for hunting work and calling them Labradors uh, all the way till today. There's no doubt that there are dogs from today that you could transfer back in time and you could go to some big fancy aristocrats, uh, you know, estate and say, hey, would you like to introduce this puppy into your breeding program? And they say, yeah, because that dog looks like what I need. It looks like it's going to hunt all day. It looks like it's going to be an easy keeper in the kennel. It looks like it's going to get along with all the other dogs. It's going to naturally deliver to hand. It's going to have a strong, stable temperament. It's going to be fast and athletic. Okay, it's going to have all the things I would need, you know, if I was going to have a big party and uh, one of the guys that works for me was going to walk around with his dog and pick up birds when we shot him. Okay, this dog probably fit into that. Okay, this dog might or might not. You know what I'm saying? He does like to fetch, but how would he handle, you know, living outside in the cold outside all the time? How would the dogs with this coat color uh, do in a kennel environment in 1880? You know, maybe, maybe not as good, okay? Because I'm the first one to admit that the dogs that are silver or charcoal are prone to skin issues a little bit. But look guys, that's not the only thing that's going on with Labrador Retrievers now, okay? I see lots of dogs, and you see this, you see this term thrown around, I mean, just all the time from reputable breeders that come out here, really, really well-established uh, championship bitch lines that have elbow clearances and hip clearances and this and that and the other that aren't fast, that aren't agile, that have dupery eyelids and every time we go out back they get something in their eyelids, they won't fetch, they're low endurance, they're low energy and people love them, okay? But would they meet the standard of the people who originated the breed? Could you take the dogs, the Labrador Retrievers that are now bred to do like seeing eye work or therapy work in a hospital or a children's home? Could you take those dogs back and drop it off at an Earl or a Duke's estate and those people think that that dog would fit into their breeding program? The answer is I don't believe it would, okay? So if we're gonna be strict about the breed standards and we're gonna pay a lot of lip service to the origin of the breed, you know, then do we have to make sure that all the bloodlines, okay, would be welcomed by the original people that started breeding the dogs? 
okay? And then make separate categories for dogs that don't meet those uh, standards, right? Okay, so like right here, this is a dog, uh, friendly, he's outgoing, loves people, he likes to fetch a little bit, he's got good endurance, good energy outputs. Uh, he doesn't live in a kennel environment where he's gonna have to have the toughest skin in the world. He doesn't uh, live in an environment where like, um, like he's gonna be outside in the sun all the time. He, he lives in the suburbs in a big house. And so for a lot of the qualities that a Labrador Retriever needs to have in general for nowadays standards, he has them. He's friendly, outgoing, everybody loves him, don't they, Stammer Man? He's got a lot of things going for him. Uh, does he have some skin issues? Uh, his coat's a little, like a little funny to the touch, you know, a little, a little, little kind of rough. Uh, he did have an infection pop up on his, uh, on his foot. And these kind of things pop up on dogs all the time, you know. Uh, in my experience, does that kind of thing happen to the silver and charcoal dogs a little bit more? Yes, it does, of course. I mean, as a kennel owner, right, my children, my staff, everybody that comes here knows that if we have this kind of dog in the kennel, we've got to be super careful with it. And even with us, and we were super careful, that kind of stuff still happens. And it happens at a much higher rate uh, than it does with the black dogs, you know, okay? But uh, does that mean that, like, th this dog's not going to fit in the suburbs? No, okay. Does this mean that this dog can't go to the soccer game, that can't go to the hospital, can't go wherever? No, I mean, is this out dog ideally suited for the type of work I do? I mean, if you see in the background back here, you see what we do all day, right? I mean, I got a four wheel drive truck with a side by side on it and a canoe and I have a tractor. I mean, we're always outside. We're always doing stuff where dogs can get cuts and scrapes and scratches and they can fall off bluffs and stuff. And so we need tough, hardy dogs. But do you need a tough, hardy dog? I mean, do you really have to have the toughest, hardiest dog in the world? Does your dog need to be able to thrive in a kennel environment? If not, is there room in the breed, breed standard for one more color? I mean, they did it with chocolates, right? And people will say, well, Stoney, there was always chocolates, but they called them. Listen, guys, I keep saying this over and over again, and y'all keep somehow or another dismissing what I'm saying, but in the dog business, it's always been a history of mama's babies and daddy's maybes. If you think that in the Labrador fancy that there hasn't been dogs introduced to that foundation stock over the years, sometimes on purpose and sometimes by accident, and then pawned off as purebred Labrador Retrievers with uh, pedigrees uh, that are, are not exactly right, you're crazy. You're literally crazy, okay? Because it happens all the time. People don't like to admit it. And the term, you know, like, like reputable breeder, what does that mean? You know, if, you, if you're in the dog business a lot, here's what you would figure out, is breeders click up and they like what they like, you know? And that's why if you look at the photos of dogs, breeds over time, they change and at every epoch, in that history uh, of the dog breed, okay, all the breeders that were reputable liked whatever the dog looked like in the pictures. It's that simple, you know? And then when those people die out, a new batch comes in and they change labs a little bit. I mean, you see the labs now, they're this tall and this wide, you know, and they can't run all day, they can't fetch all day. A lot of them don't even fetch, and shouldn't we start there? If the name of the dog is Labrador Retriever, isn't the retriever part more important than anything else, right? I mean, like if you were a guy, say, say I worked on, uh, on a duke or, or, or on some type of the aristocrat's estate, and my sole job was to care for the dogs and make sure that they fetched good when we had parties where we shot a bunch of uh, birds that we let out of a cage, wouldn't my primary emphasis be on a dog that retrieved? If my job depended on how well the dog retrieved, Okay, would I rather have a kind of gray dog that retrieves or a black dog that won't retrieve? You know, now I'm saying if it's my job, not if I get, you know, because I'm just working for the guy that owns a place. I'm working for the guy. My job is to make sure that our dogs look good compared to his buddy's dogs. That's it, you know. So this is all I want you guys to think about, is I want you to think about whether or not breed standards, right, should be variable over time. Okay, and if they should be variable, variable over time and we understand that the dogs are going to be different sizes, they're going to be different weights, they're going to have different dispositions, they're going to have different energy levels, they're going to adapt to circumstances differently. Okay, if all that is in play 
And we accept the fact that over time, there's been various breeds introduced to all foundation stock, okay, to, to maintain breeds, or to turn dogs from, uh, you know, wide-headed good dogs that are bred to swim in cold water to narrow-headed skinny dogs that point. Come on, let's be honest, right? If we're gonna, if we're gonna turn a blind eye to droopy eyes and skinny-headed dogs that point in the lab business, we can't turn a blind eye to the fact that some people like them this color. I just, I don't know. Now, before you start giving me a hard time, like I am, like I'm advocating for that. No, I'm not. I'm advocating for this. They're all black and they all fetch and they all do good in the cold water and they're all super friendly and outgoing with people and dogs. For me, if your dog doesn't have those qualities, we can just mark it right off the list. Okay. So I'm, I'm more biased than any of y'all, but I'm saying I, I don't get to run the world. What makes you think you get to run the world? What makes you think you get to get in the comment section and, you know, just say mean things about these dogs with a blind eye to your own dogs and to your friends' dogs? I don't think that's fair, okay? So, uh, post below, tell me what you think. Am I right? Am I wrong? And if I'm wrong, hey, don't just say I'm wrong, okay? Don't just say, well, that dog's obviously got some Weimaraner in it because I ain't even saying it doesn't. I'm of the opinion it probably does. But what the difference is, back up over here, cameraman, and show them these dogs right here. We'll see how, we'll see. This is what I always love to do with dog training experts and aficionados. Okay, out of this group of dogs, okay, here, come turn right here. Good. Out of, sit, and you sit right there. Out of this group of dogs, okay, now you look at them, you get a good look. There's a little bit of flat coated retriever in there. Can you guys pick out the one that has flat coat in it? If so, pick them out. I'll tell you their names. This is Portly, this is No Name, this is Annie, and this is Shogun. And there's a little flat coat in there. But can you tell? Could you come to my kennel and tell which one of those dogs had a daddy's maybe? I don't think so. But maybe I'm wrong. Post your comments below and let's see if you know what you're talking about. Very good dogs. I got so good dogs.